Hello, fictional. Welcome to the fiction series X. Today we are gonna see, what if Issei was the Dragon Emperor of Games and got harem. Part 3. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Since joining the student council, I've learned that my popularity grew instantly. It's like only popular people could join either the student council or the occult research club, and so when a nobody or a loner like me joins, they instantly become really popular. The same went for Asia, she went from zero friends to god knows how many in her first day alone, and it looks to be growing steadily. For the remainder of the week after acquiring our familiars I learned one special tidbit, I could freely use the lord's name. I mean, I always knew I could, but I thought that was simply because of the Rosario, and never thought to question Yubal on the matter as I was just thankful for it. While I wasn't heavily religious myself, I did have a childhood friend who was so I've experienced my fair share of it. The reason I think of this is because Asia can't use the Lord's name without getting a headache. First I though that could be because I'm technically a demon rather than a devil, but that still would have had no influence on the matter, it was all because of the spirits I can potentially control. Yubel purified herself so I could control holy spirits which in turn mean I'm an unknown or special case in heaven's link. And I'm actually a little prideful about it too. With the topic of spirits in mind, I came to something which was going to be pretty heavy in payment for approximately three-fifths of it all. I want the essence of the four mass and the strongest queen. Lucifer and Leviathan should be pretty easy if I can convince Sona and Rias, but I'll probably have to do something in return, and luckily that'll be easier than doing something for Lucifer or Leviathan themselves. Knock knock. As the lone member of the student council still at school today, I hadn't expected a knock at the door. Not in the slightest. Hum in. Putting my pen down, I looked up from where I sat in Sona's seat at the center of the room. It was a very comfortable seat to sit in, both in softness for my butt and superiority over the room. A brief second or two passed before the door opened with Rhea's passing through into the room with a small mahogany box in her hands. Looking round the room, she was a little perplexed to see only me here, but also wore a little smirk when she saw where I was sitting. Only one here you balcoon. That is correct Gremory senpai. It's a Friday, so I'm usually the last one to finish as I have the quotas to look over, and as I have some money problems to deal with clubs today, I told everyone to go in Asia not to bother waiting for me. And so I took advantage of Kaichu's absence, I can finally see why she gets angry when I go near the chair. Rias let out a small giggle in response before putting the mahogany box down on the table and sliding it towards me. As I put my hand on top of the box to pull it in closer I instantly felt the power of the spirits inside, it was incredibly vast, but it was also incredibly familiar to me, or should I say Yubel. The box is your set of evil pieces and Ani-sama was right, Beelzebub-sama did name them the spirit pieces. I'm sorry but I already took a look inside, when I received mine I could feel the power radiating from the pieces, but with them I couldn't. I'm actually a little jealous, your pieces are very beautiful. I raised my eyebrows slightly in interest, lifting up a small brass hook on the rather stylized lock I opened the lid to the box, and I couldn't help but raise my eyebrows further at the sight before me. Rias wasn't lying, the 16 no, 17 pieces were very beautiful. 17 freshly cut diamonds molded into a chessette with two queens, each one of them teeming with spirits while devoid of demonic energy, but hinting at a hole to it. Guardians. Guardians huh? So some of the guardians from Yubel's temple in the underworld were used in this. From the tales that Yubel has told me, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been reluctant at all to help out with this. No, I can tell that right now. The spirits within each cut diamond was brimming with excitement. Lightly taking the king piece from the deep purple cloth inside, I gingerly lifted it out from the box. It connected with my spirit immediately and shone brightly in an ecstatic response. Ah it's rare to see such pure and untainted beauty. This is more like a present than a right, a rather grandiose present. A smile coming onto my face I twirled the king piece round in my hand before placing it back into the mahogany box. Pushing the box just off to the side of the table, I looked back up to Rhea's keeping the faint smile on my face. The Seikun, they aren't just normal pieces. Completely out of the system, we won't be able to participate as a king in raiding game, but we will be able to share servants if you find anyone you like. They'll still get all of the enhancements though on top of spirit familiarity. That's definitely interesting. I understand that point, I can be a servant, but not a king in a raiding game, because all they had to do was stall me while taking out my king. Thank you for bringing this to me Gremory senpai Is there anything else you'd like to inform the student council about? Ah yes, a leave of absence for the whole occult research club. The next two weeks. Then whole school days, but there are also six days off too. Does this have something to do with her slightly off spirit? I see and the reasons for it. Training for a raiding game. We just had a meeting with Razor Phoenix, the two families have given me a way out. 
To beat Razor Phoenix in a raiding game, I have 10 days to train them. If I lose, we are to be formally engaged right after. I nodded lightly, I can definitely sanction this request myself. Of course Grimory Senpai, I will write down the absences for your whole club and inform Kaichu. I guess you should expect a phone call or whatever from her later. If you don't mind, what are your thoughts on this? She looked at me a little confused but started to answer me nevertheless. Irritated. Any other family I may just have a chance but against a phoenix. The chance we do have is very slim. And that's true. They do have a chance, but that's a very slim chance. They aren't immortal like me, but in terms of battle, they are very close to being so with their instantaneous regeneration. Lucifer probably asked for her to be given a chance but this as her chance. Definitely not him, he wouldn't like the chances enough to sanction this on his own accord. This would be Lord Grimory's chance to her then. True, very true. If you want I could tell you something that could perhaps give you a better chance. Please do. Her eyes widened considerably as soon as I mentioned increasing her chances. It isn't a very big increase though. It'll all depend on Saji and how well everything runs through for you. Saji is your trump card. Combine his shadows and absorption line. Regardless how long much he trains he can't enter balance breaker which he would need if you wanted to contain Razor Phoenix. He can break out with little trouble I suspect. If what I've read about the Phoenix is true, then you can defeat them with a very powerful strike and so Grimory Senpai that brings you into this mix too. You do your own training, better yourself. I have no doubt that you are skilled with your magic, I can see that through your spirit, but there is something off. You are overcomplicating things, all I can say is to smooth out your magic. Reasons for this is that absorption line can also pass off the energy it drains if he trains enough to gain a second line. That I believe is your strongest chance to win. Rias nodded along with me as I spoke, and her expression turned a little sheepish when I mentioned to her about training. Thank you for the advice you will coon. My pleasure, Grimory Senpai. Giving me a short wave she turned around slowly and walked towards the door. Her body language was off, she looked small, almost helpless. I'm gonna have to say something uncharacteristic of me. Just as she opened the door to leave the student council room, I cleared my throat to catch her attention and spoke up. Don't worry about failure and just persevere. Concentrate on training with your peerage, they are behind you 110% without a doubt. Rely on your bonds and you can get through this. Time to push it even further. You may be a grimery, but remember that you are also Rias. Show them your resolve, show them that you can be as strong as your brother. Take this week to create a technique that only Rias knows. You can do it, everyone here at the student council believes in you, and we are behind you all the way too. Good luck and have fun, train your peerage well. I'll see you in 10 days, Rias. I changed my faint smile into a true rare smile as I looked at Rias who stared back at me in surprise with slightly tinged cheeks. Giving her a light nod I turned back to my papers and a few seconds later the doors to the student council room closed. On the night of Rhea's raiding game, I stayed behind after school with Kaiju to get all the recordings for it ready. Apparently despite it being an unofficial raiding game, it's still going to be broadcast to the underworld. It does have a huge importance towards the outcome after all, once we had readied all of the equipment we had made our way to their club room. Knock knock. Opening the door straight away, I followed Sona into the club room, and the strange ambience that usually fills the room was completely amiss. It was now filled with a nervous aura, but there were hints of anticipation within it. I trust the training went well Ria Senpai. I was the one to speak as Sona cast an inquisitive look around the people in the room, gauging them for herself. Yes, it went well. Everyone has gotten stronger, but may I ask for your opinion on my spirit? Does it still seem off to you? Bringing my eyes into focus, I stared deep into Rhea's chest completely pushing to the side what kind of response could come from that and looked straight into her spirit. It was definitely better but still a little off, hopefully it'll be enough. You have most definitely improved but there is still something off. Her expression dropped for a split second before she steeled herself again, keeping up the facade of King must be troubling for her here. Everything is riding on their shoulders and it will determine her future after all. Hopefully it'll be enough. Hope may be your best bet right now Rias, let's just hope it's on your side for this battle. As the clock hits two minutes to midnight, a silver light shone in the room, and a tall woman in dark blue maid clothing appeared into the room. Looking at her, I took in her cool expression, coupled with the silver hair she wore in braids down her front and free flowing down her back. She was most definitely a beautiful woman, but she was also the strongest queen. Taking notice of the strongest queen, Sona turned to Rias. Rias, we'll handle the recording of the battle so good luck you'll need it. Thank you Sona. Turning on her heel, Sona gave him a sharp but quick glance, to which I could only sigh lightly at. Watching her walk calmly out of the room, I felt like she was being a little too cold right here. Even by my standards. 
Turning my gaze back to the room, I turned so I could take a quick look at the silver-haired maid in the room and let her know of my presence. Finally turning to Rhea's I locked gazes with her. It's time Rhea senpai. Good luck and have fun. Just keep calm and you'll be in good stead for the fight, push on and don't leave anything out. With a bit of luck, you'll get out of it phoenix free. See you in a few hours. Showing her a small smirk, I nodded my head lightly as I raised my hand in a slight wave and turned, leaving the room. Walking out of the room, I saw Sona leaning against the wall. Waiting until I had just closed the door Sona spoke up, albeit quietly. You don't show dislike for Rias anymore, don't tell me you've fallen for her in her final hour. As she pushed herself off the wall, I gave her a dry chuckle. Starting up the magic circle to return to the student council room to start the recordings, I decided to answer her. No, she has just grown on me. It doesn't matter whether it's for the good of the devil race, no one should be pressured into a life decision such as this. Just as the magic circle kicked itself into gear, I swear I saw Sona wearing a sad smile with a pair of equally sad eyes. The battle didn't end favorably for Rias. She lost but not without a good battle. I honestly believe that Rias performed very well for her first rating game, especially in one against a phoenix. Her strategy was good and she implemented my advice while getting the upper hand in many places because of it. She made good use of her peerage making up for the lack in numbers, but ultimately it wasn't enough. Razor was as strong as I had anticipated, but his peerage was stronger than I had thought. Despite the fact that his peerage was a full set, they were all very talented and held plenty of potential to grow even stronger. Their teamwork was also very good, but they weren't up to par with the strength of Rhea's peerage strangely enough, Razor's pawns at least. Then there was a deciding factor outside of Razor's own strength, and that was one of his bishops. Somehow and for whatever reason, his little sister, Ravel Phoenix, had became his servant or probably just bishop. She neglected to fight during the battle, but I held no doubt that even if she did, she would have held her own very well. There was something about her that hit home with me, as a phoenix she held far more potential than Razor does. The phoenix clan was undoubtedly a strong one, combined the future I foresee with their wealth, and they can rival the four families with Satans on that alone. That is something scary for the other clans, but it's also something only either the Great King or Phoenix could do anyway, so it's within reason I guess. Looking at the Phoenix family as a whole, it was something I could get a good hold in, even if I was to do something to either Razor or the second child. The only ones I could see as important for political reasons and my interests were Lord and Lady Phoenix themselves, then the heir and oldest son Ruval Phoenix and finally Ravel Phoenix, as she both held high potential and as she was the lone daughter of Phoenix. I had to be careful with them, but not overly so it would seem. Reading about them before the engagement party gave me a slight premonition. Standing in my given room in the Citri Castle in the Underworld, I was currently drying my hair after a shower, while having a talk with Yubel about my clothes for the evening. The day is the day that you will officially take over as my successor as Seikun. And it all comes with an engagement between two pillar clans. Not fishy at all. Aibu, just think about it. The great Lucifer will owe you one. That whole thought did make what could potentially happen worthwhile to me. Taking the towel off from my head, I threw it into the wash basket in the corner of my room and took a deep breath, allowing Yubel to do her thing and completely sink my body with her power and the spirits of the underworld. As her takeover started, I felt a gust of wind whip up around my body and taking a hold of it brushing through my hair. With my hair fluttering about in the wind, I could see strands of my hair fluttering back and forth, changing from brown to a deep purple. One by one, the hairs changed their color. But the wind disappearing, a purple light ran itself down my body as a set of clothes formed themselves around my body. A set of formal-ish clothes created from spirits with intense magical protection. First was a deep purple dress shirt with long sleeves that held upturned cuffs that showed their wide undersides. The buttons closing themselves up leaving the very top one undone as a white tie forms itself around my neck, tightening the collar ever so slightly, while leaving the tie knot slightly loose. A pair of black jeans with a wide white belt with orange and turquoise studs that overlapped itself around my waist before coiling around my right thigh. Appearing around my feet and tucking the ends of my jeans into themselves were a pair of military-style boots that took on the same color as my eyes. The left shoe of the pair was turquoise, while the right shoe was orange in color. Finally appeared my glasses that snugly fit themselves onto my face over my eyes. Looking down over myself I couldn't help but think it was a little peculiar, but damn did I like it. I never would have thought these colors would work so well together. Yubel Sama, are you ready? Ah yes, I'll be out in a second. That's one thing I wasn't used to. The maids here don't knock unless they are going to enter, something Lord Citri set up for differentiating things. Though, it kinda makes sense to me for why Sona knocks before entering straight, if the maids will only knock when they are entering. I will inform Master and Oju Sama. Yeah, okay mate Chan. 
Picking the second I gave out to not be a literal one, I decided to give my body a quick stretch before leaving my room. Leaving my room Nim Chan's and Asia's voice sprung to mind. They were both pretty vocal about me being Sona's date to this party. While Sona vehemently expressed it as for formality purposes, neither Nim Chan or Asia were having it, it was strange to see Asia so adamant about something. It didn't help Sona's case when no one else was taking her side on the matter. Shaking my mind of it, I started to walk down the stairs into the main hall of the Citri Castle, walking towards where Lord and Lady Citri awaited me with Sona. Standing there, Lord Citri was in a pristine black tuxedo arm and arm with Lady Citri, who wore a long white gown with a black shawl over her shoulders. Sona then stood by herself, her eyes focused completely on me, as she wore a surprisingly revealing royal blue dress that had a thin belt of the same color just above the waist with a large bow. Adopting a smirk, I tilted my head to the right slightly on approach. My, doesn't my date for the evening look beautiful? The embarrassed blush I saw on her face was well worth a brief pain of the fist that planted itself into the back of my head, something which actually made me stumble slightly. And you yourself, you balcoon. I'm surprised that you tidy up so well, especially in such surprising colors. Still holding on to a slight blush, her expression had gone back to her usual serious one, along with her reply. Never really worn formal clothing before so I had Yubel pick out the clothes, I get the feeling that the belt was Drake's idea. Little confused as to why it goes around my thigh too though. Everyone's gaze then dropped to the white belt that coiled itself around my right thigh. All gazes then came back up at the same time like we were all set to do so by a system. Lord Citri then took it upon himself to move things forward, and he did so by teleportation. I was a little surprised when the Citri circle burst into life underneath our feet, and while I was still in my small state of surprise, Sona took a hold of my arm and linked it with hers to mirror her parents. Breaking away from that surprise and looking to Sona we teleported off to the venue for the evening. Arriving there, I could see the grandness of it all. Shine and sparkle as far as the eye could see, priceless paintings and vases dotted up and down the walls. Streaks of gold accenting the walls around us. Then there was all the hustle and bustle in front of us, getting a feel for the area I could tell that we were last in line, and that was undoubtedly because of me, so I could be introduced to everyone at the party. Multiple other devils teleporting themselves in ahead of us, dotting through the line dependent on where they were on the entry list. The line was a slow one, but it didn't bother me, and from what I could see, it didn't bother anyone else either. They were probably all used to the wait for this kind of thing. We were all undoubtedly being introduced on our entrances, and from what I can tell, me and Sona are to be introduced separately to Lord and Lady Citri. We were around 50 couples back I'd guess. Ahead of us were other heirs and heiresses, other lord and ladies, and presumably a number of important devils like politicians or war heroes, maybe even those who struck into fame through the raiding games. None of that I knew, I neglected to look over the attendance list that Sona gave to me. I mean as Yubel, they are going to want to get on some kind of level with me, and that'll include an introduction, so I'll learn all the names of people I don't care for later on. Hey Sona, while we are waiting I want to confirm one thing. That is Yubel Kuhn. Our relationship. I'm high class like you are, will I have to be debunking people's thoughts of our relationship or not? Presumably they'll think that we are an item as we are attending like this. Just in front of us, I could hear Lord Citri chuckling lightly. It both made me happy and scared me a little. I could tell it was both joking and calculative in nature. Something was wrong with it. You are my pawn, but you are also my equal. Tell them what you want. Why do I sense bitterness in her reply? Because she is a young woman. As always, thanks for your input. I don't know where I'd be without it. Boy. Keep quiet lowly dragon emperor. I can't afford to be speaking with you during this party. Iwa. Lolahi. I think I broke him already. Ubal Kuhn, it's nearly our turn. Remember, no snide comments at all this evening. DCH. That's kinda annoying. You really know that I'm getting comfortable when I throw around unneeded snide comments though. True to her word though, the line was considerably shorter than before. Only three couples ahead of Lord and Lady Citrio, make that two couples. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've already prepared myself for this, I just hope they don't say anything too irritating, or I might accidentally turn Virgonic. That threat was a half full one. I both meant it and didn't. I wouldn't do it myself, but Drag is a loose cannon, he'll blow regardless on my thoughts. We'll see you two inside. Have fun you balcoon. Giving both Lord and Lady Citri a short wave, I watched as the two large doors opened and they were introduced into the ballroom before us. Taking a step up to the door, I felt Sona come closer to me as my freedom became a little more restricted. Upon taking note of that, I heard the loud voice of the announcer on the other side of the door. And finally we will be introducing a special guest for this party. The doors then swung open, I could immediately see all eyes were on us. 
I didn't even have a second to take a breath as Sona stepped forward forcing me to do exactly the same walking into the room. Introducing Sona Sitri Sama and her date for the evening, the demonic spirit priest, Yubal Sama. That surely caught the attention of everyone in the room. I exhaled heavily out through my nose as I felt the eyes that were now staring at us upon our entrance. It was weird, probably even beyond normal levels of weirdness. As I looked through the room at the devils they bowed, they all did. I wanted to gape at it all, but I didn't, I didn't expect this level of respect. Not in the slightest. The bows lasted too. It wasn't like a butler's bow to their master, but one of exceptionally deep reverence, it was a long one. It completely changed the cheerful atmosphere that was in the room. A silence hit the room that only the sound of Sona's heels against the floor broke through. When the devils lifted their heads again, they all wore faces of stupor. Their eyes were still directed completely at me, even the man who I assumed was Razor Phoenix at the front of the room who was standing on an elevated platform. It was a look that didn't feel like it fit on his face. Bubal Sama, I welcome you to this party. I'm deeply honored that you choose this event to announce your return to the underworld. Feeling Sona's eyes boring a hole into the side of my head, I just raised my hand up in acknowledgement to Razor before nodding to him with a small smile. Razor replied to that with a nod of his own, although he coupled it with a smirk. Then, pretty abruptly at that, I felt myself being dragged off to the right side of the room to where familiar signatures were. Looking off to where Sona was taking me I saw Saji and the rest of Rhea's peerage, obviously missing Rhea's herself out of the mix, as she was presumably elsewhere being forced into getting ready. The devils that were between us and our destination moved out of the way and just looked at me with wry grins, as I just let myself be dragged about. Udo kun Saji, don't you think that you two are too properly dressed for this, or are you planning to try and pick up chicks tonight? As Sona tightened her grip onto me into a vice-like one, I learned that my voice was a little too loud, and the surrounding devil looked at me in interest. I was the only male who you could say was a little down-dressed. And what about you, Yubal Sama? This is your first formal event. That doesn't answer my question Yudo. I don't have a completely valid excuse, but my reason is that I'm a demon and not a devil. Devil formal wear is tuxedo and the like. Demon formal wear appears to be what I'm wearing. Appears to be. You didn't pick it yourself. No, that was all Yubel's and probably Drake's idea. Actually I doubt Drake understood what's going on. I've been ruining his pride recently. Boo I boo, it's enough that you just do it in private. I told you to be quiet, lowly dragon emperor. Boo I I I. An exceptionally loud roar echoes throughout the ballroom. Refraining from laughing but not doing enough to mask a smile, I look to each side of my vision and see people looking around. Sona though decided to quite literally face palm, I suppose I should take something good from being able to do that. As you can see, he's not in the right frame of mind right now. Yet you act like it's not your fault, you balcoon. I let out a small shrug in response to Sona. Well, it's his fault for calling me a lolican after Nimchan jumped me. Also caused Yubal to start sulking. Nimchan is the one to blame for all this. We've been completely fine for 12 years, but when I join your peerage, Nimchan is there to try and break me out of my loner attitude. Well she has done so for the most part, it's had a bad effect on what goes on in my head. Turning to my left to look at Sona, I see that she sighs in response. Sona-chan, it's not good to sigh you know. Then stop making me sigh. Well I think that's your fault. You are the one who decided that I would be your date this evening. And I thought you were mature enough to behave yourself. I am behaving. That's the problem. You are behaving yet this still happens. Now, now Sona-chan, let's stop this before we hit the level of a married couple. Breaking away from Sona's grip, I cast a small glance over the hall and sighed before turning back to Sona. Well, it's about time for me to go and meet people I'll forget about after the party. See you all later. She shows me a sympathetic smile before nodding and immediately dropping the smile. Turning on the spot, I then ventured out into the hall. Aye boo, don't you think the Citri lass is being a little too emotional towards you? Well, firstly you are acting a little differently to begin with. I have noticed and have taken note of it, I've also thought about mentioning it, but the possible repercussions of it aren't very inviting. Who oh so she is that Sundier type. Possibly, although I have the feeling she could be a Yandier as well. I can see that one Ibu quite frankly I shudder at the thought. You, the great drag, shudder at the thought of a young devil getting angry. Did I'll tell you this once. I've experienced it before. I'll tell you this now, I have caused some waves before in the dragon community, but no wave was bigger than the one I made with Tiamat, the lone female of the dragon kings. There is something about Sona that is similar to Tiamat. Stopping in the center of the ballroom, I felt a blanket of cold fall over my body, and my skin went white in dread. That doesn't sound good at all Drake. What in the hell did you do to Tiamat? About 10% of her anger towards me is because of the fact that I completely forgot what happened. I probably banged some other dragon without her knowing. 
I don't know how you could say that so nonchalantly, I feel like I should hold some respect for you in a way, but I have the feeling that I'll start to hate myself if I do so. After about 15 minutes of non-stop mingling I find myself at a side table where a selection was food was located. Picking up a spare plate I resolved myself and took a little of absolutely everything, along with two glasses of wine, before feeling happy with myself and moving on. At least the food is great. Taking a few mouthfuls of whatever I pick up from my plate, I moved to a far wall and leaned back against it. Focusing in on the people here, I felt my eyes flash quickly and start to take in information about everyone here. Outside of the two peerages here, which obviously belonged to Rias and Razor, everyone was at least high class, and from the spirit surrounding them, they were all high class from birth. Though there was a few ultimate class and up signatures floating around the room. Sensing a few spirits approaching me from my right side, I finish off the last piece of meat on my plate and summon Kuribo to take it over to the table for me. Taking a glass in each hand, I look to my right to see three blondes and a beautifully striking woman with long, wavy purple hair. They were Lord and Lady Phoenix with their daughter, Ravel Phoenix, and Razor Phoenix's queen. His queen piqued both my and Yubel's interest. The girl's name was Yubaluna, and her specialized bomb magic utilized den spirits to enhance the explosions. She piqued Yubel's interest because of what I guessed they were here in front of me for, a member of the Night Guardians. Back before Yubel purified herself, there was two families that acted as guardians to Yubel. The Day Guardians and the Night Guardians. Pretty much as the names say, the two families took turns in protection to tail. One during the day and the other during the night. They would be the reason why I have two queen pieces. Yubel Dono, it's an honor to have you here this evening. As Lord Phoenix spoke to me, he bowed to me as his wife and daughter, what's the word curtsy? I think so. Yubaluna, on the other hand, knelt down before me with her head lowered and eyes closed. It's a pleasure Lord Phoenix. Yubaluna, no need to be so formal. A simple curtsy like Lady Phoenix and Ravel Phoenix will do. But Yubel Sama. No buts Yubaluna, adhere to it or leave. As I watched Yubaluna stand back, I could swear I heard Drake snickering because I said butts. Did I break him to the point he went nuts or just reverted to his childhood? My apologies Yubal Sama. Good, good. Not that I dislike your company, but you've come off to the side to speak to me, because. Lucifer Dono told us that you had received your spirit pieces, and so we have come to return Yubaluna to you. We would also like to make a somewhat selfish request. I inwardly groaned at that, a selfish request. It was easy to tell what it was, hopefully I knew what they meant. That would be their daughter I assume. Of course, I would be glad to take you Baluna back from you. What is this request then? Lord Phoenix then confirmed my thoughts as he looked down to his daughter as Lady Phoenix stepped behind Ravel and put her hands on her daughter's shoulders. We would like you to also take in our daughter. As a step towards building our relations, I would also like to offer onto you a number of our Phoenix tears for your future pieces. Actually, I had thought of trading to you one of my own pieces, but Ravel here volunteered to do so herself. Taking my eyes away from Lord Phoenix, I looked down to Ravel and stared straight at her. I brought the third eye out into life on my forehead as I stared deep into her eyes. It was conflicted, she had somewhat lied to her parents. I see, she had volunteered under the pretenses of allowing me to play with the spirits of a Phoenix descendant, rather than a peerage member to the Lord of Phoenix. Definitely a plus there, but that wasn't the young girl's true intention, her true intention was something more pure. One of the only pure feelings a devil can have, love albeit her feelings felt like they were just a schoolgirl's crush at this moment in time. The young phoenix also had plenty of resolve, she didn't falter under my gaze. She did flinch slightly at the sight of the third eye, but not anything more. I see and is your daughter willing to get a little muddy. I will want to experience the spirit surrounding her in all areas. She is Yubel Dono, we have already expressed that to her, and she was still rather adamant about volunteering herself. Bringing one of the two glasses up to my mouth, I took a sip as I continued to stare at Ravel. That is fine, I will accept your request. Am I to assume that Ravel will be joining Yubaluna to come live with me in some manner? Yes, Yubaluna will return with you after the party, and we will send Ravel to you at the end of the week. Lucifer Dono has already informed us of your current living arrangements, and thus we will add a few levels to the apartment complex free of charge. I see. Stepping off from the wall, I turned to Lord Phoenix and stretched out my hand for him to take which he did almost instantly. Then I hope our future can be a fruitful one. We can both agree on that. As he tightened his grip on my hand, I tightened my own grip and we shook hands to finalize the deal. Letting go of each other's hands, we both took on smiles. Mine being more restrained than Lord Phoenix's. Last thing you will don't know, they are both currently free pieces, so all you have to do is place whatever your pieces are called into them, and they'll take over. Of course, thanks. I look forward to seeing how the underworld changes with you back. Until the next time we meet. 
giving me a short wave, he turned and walked off back into the hall, while Lady Phoenix said farewell to her daughter for a bit and thanked Ubaluna for serving under Razor for so long. Lady Phoenix then curtsied to me before walking off quickly to join up with her husband again. Hey Drake, look we got a new lolly. Ay boo, are you doing this on purpose? You could have declined his offer. And pass up on getting to see Phoenix spirits on a day-to-day -day basis. You gotta be insane to think I'd say no to that. Hein, just leave me be. Stop calling me the Emperor of Lawless, and I won't make any more jabs at you for being a lolican. I'm glad you finally see it my way Drake. Two deals in one night, this is a great night so far. Turning to face the two girls in front of me, I summoned one queen piece into my right hand and one bishop piece into my left hand. Taking a step forward I thrusted the two diamond pieces towards their designated targets and they flew out of my hands and straight into the chests of the two girls. The speed surprised me a little. I felt the pieces then sink their spirits in with mine before the pieces teleported themselves back into the box that they originally came in. So, how about we go and enjoy the rest of this party? It wasn't long after we went to enjoy the party that I was pulled off to the side by Serzich's for something stupid. Followed by Grafia, I walked side by side with Serzich's onto the slightly elevated podium up to where both Razor and now Rias stood. Looking to Rias, I could see that she was pretty miffed about the whole situation, but her mood did brighten slightly as I waved to her. Razor Kuhn, if I may. Of course Lucifer Sama. Thank you. Everyone. As today is a grand occasion I would like to spruce the evening up even more. We have the unveiling of the immortal spirit in Ubaldono and the union between my family's clan and the phoenixes, the immortal firebird. And what better to spruce up the evening than to do something flashy in the form of a fight between the two young men. As Urzich spoke I could see the mental weight that each one of his words held with the devils within the room. What about it you two? I'm also planning on awarding something to the winner, anything goes. An extra engagement gift to Razor on top of what I have already given and a welcoming present to Ubaldono. As expected of him, he was going to do it this way. Making it so that Lucifer and the Gremory clan aren't in question here, but to push it onto me, in hope at least. I'll try to grant that hope, but we'll have to see if Razor can successfully set me up to put all the blame for the disbandment on Razor. Hopefully his supposed greed will come into play here. Of course Lucifer Sama. I will gladly have the pleasure of taking the first fight with Yubal Sama. I'm game, I could do with stretching the tethered lines. Good, then what would you like for when either one of you wins? Leaving it vague, helping me out by getting Razor to answer first. Good, trying to keep from owing me too much I see. Razor though was also quick to play into our hands, and almost surprisingly so. Then if I win, I would like to propose an engagement between my little sister, Ravel and Yubalsama. That works way too much into our hands here, way too much. Though, I can see that his supposed greed is towards the Phoenix clan as a whole. Speaking of engagements, I think I'll play on that too. I want my gift to be that Razor can not marry someone who is from a Pillar clan. I saw Razor wince at that and Serzich's stared at me incredulously, I did push what wasn't said a little further than thought. Ah well, I am a demon and not a devil after all. It also helps to show that Serzich's hadn't got me into a scheme of his to save his precious little sister. Especially because I said it in a roundabout way. Oh okay. If Razor Kuhn should win then you, Yubaldono, will be formally engaged to Ravel Phoenix. And if Yubaldono should win then Razor Kuhn will be banned from taking a wife from any of the Pillar clans, in turn cancelling the marriage between him and Rhea's Gremory, because she is a high-class devil from the Gremory clan. But that said, small but loud chatter hit the ballroom as Serzich's went off to prepare an arena for us to fight. When I looked up to Rhea's and Razor, I could see a large smile on Rhea's face, along with a conflicted look on Razor's. His mind had to be going through a lot of choices and way to deal with things. Razor, you can bring your servants to help out if you want. Spirit magic mostly revolves around summoning, so you might be forced to fight multiple ones. Ah thank you Yubalsama. His tone was a little haughty, he must be underestimating me as my body doesn't look that powerful, and my aura is a small one, but that's his fault for doing so. Normal people can't see spirit energy, my whole aura is pumped into my spiritual energy. Even with being immortal, I don't really want to fight someone who can see spiritual energy or a strong yaokai. Greg, you want to come out and play? Against a phoenix and whatever possible servants he brings. Hell yeah. Good answer Ibu. Watching Serzich's approach us again, I took off my glasses and dismissed them back to my spare dimension and turned towards him. Seeing that Razor took a step forward with his two knights behind him, I smirked before walking towards Serzich's. Ready? The four of us nodded back to Serzich's in response, and he smiled lightly. Grafia stepped up from behind him and brought up her own magic circle at the same time he did. Grafias appeared under me while Serzich's Gremory circle appeared under Razor and his two knights. 
feeling her magic take hold of me, I dropped the spirit protection around me and allowed her magic to teleport me off into the arena. As I felt my body arriving on the new stage, I allowed the spirits to bring back their protection over my body. Dropping my head slightly, I looked through my bangs around the battlefield. Flat terrain, large night chess pieces in the corners of the rectangular arena, which had an oval just round the outside of it for a wall which lead up to a series of seats. It was reminiscent of a coliseum. Then on my marks, you can begin. 3. 2. 1. Begin. As the gauntlet was thrown down, both of Razor's knights came at me in a curved line, as if they were flanking me. Just behind them I could see Razor summoning a ball of fire that was slowly getting larger. They're going to stall me eh? I relaxed my body as the two knights came at me and didn't bother to move my body, allowing the strikes of their swords to fluidly and visibly slice through my body, brief splashes of blood spat out from my body. Once their swords had finally passed through my body, the cuts they made patched back together in a split second. Their expressions taking to sheer surprise as they jumped back feeling the intense heat that was radiating from the small house-sized fireball that Razor had just flung my way. Greg, let's do it. With the large ball rocketing towards me, I adopted a large smirk as my turquoise eye flashed to an emerald green and my deep purple hair shifting into a bright red. Welsh instincts. Calling the gear out at the last possible second, the explosion of energy from activating the subspecies Longinus for the first time sent out a blinding green light that collided with the enormous fireball. The two powerful instances exploded again against each other, flooding the field in heavy gusts of wind and a deep black smoke to cloud the area. I felt Drake take his hold on my body as I sacrificed my bones to him. My posture slouched slightly as my spine hardened and thickened, sharp red spikes jutted out of my back through my clothes as a two-meter-long scaled dragon tail appeared from my lower back. Boots in the same color as the tail took form around the bottom half of my legs, claws protruding from the front and back. An emerald jewel blinking into existence over the knee as a yellow spike jutted out from its side. Clawed gauntlets take shape around my arms reaching up to my elbows, yellow spikes jutting out of each scale on the two gauntlets. Thick scales lined themselves up along my jawline, each one protruding a single dark red spike. Two final yellow spikes grew out from the top of my jawline covering my ears before shooting outwards with red stained tips. As Drake's instincts reign over me, I feel the top half of my body being pulled down to the ground. Smacking my clawed hands down onto the ground sending out vibration I reared my head back. Brayaya. Boost. Bragg's bellowing voice echoed out along with the monstrous roar that came from me, the ear-piercing roar, whipping up its own winds that destroyed the winds that resulted from the explosion and broke through the cloud of smoke. Boost. Bragg's voice bellows out again as I stood back up, a blood-red energy wrapping itself around my body as the smoke itself cleared. Looking straight ahead I stare right at Razor and one of his two knights. Sensing the other one fast approaching from my right my tail springs into life and picks itself up into the air and swipes out towards my right side, smacking the knight that was approaching right in the face. But the sound of bones breaking, her body was flung right at Razor at a much quicker speed than she was running at to begin with. Her body sailing straight past Razor and crashing against the far wall destroying it on impact and sending a quake through the arena. Hi we just return and you nearly kill someone. Boy. I'm a dragon, we don't nearly kill someone. Be happy that she is still alive, if the phoenix makes her continue, then we'll put her out of her misery. Boost. As the new boost hits the collection, the blood red expands and disintegrates the ground underneath me. With each step forward I took came the disintegration of the ground beneath me. Sparks flew off on contact as a fire started to grow, fusing with the blood red energy surrounding me. The wavy energy turned into a flickering flame that surrounded my body. Falling both claws into fists I slammed them down into the ground in front of me, sending the blood-red energy into the ground and coursing through towards Razor and his knight, the ground churning upwards, slabs or dirt jutting up into the air. Razor and his remaining knight take to the air to dodge the upturned earth. My head jolted upwards to glare straight at them. Aye boo, let's give you some dragon wings. Large blood-red scaled wings rip themselves out of my back, splattering blood around the area as I emit a screeching howl of angered pain. A single flap of the two wings took my body up into the air, along with the trailing blood-red energy. Behold the side of the creature that bursts into life from the magma of Lucifer. Arise Uria, Lord of Searing Flames. Magma erupts from the ground beneath us as an eastern dragon with dark red scales, exuding a dark energy bursts out of the ground, slinking its way into the sky. Its spiked body coiling to fit its near 200 meter long body into the arena, a set of arms bursting out of the scales just below its head with wings sprouting from the limbs. The blue jewel on its forehead lights up causing the gold streaks on its head to light up, its piercing, menacing yellow eyes staring down at Razor and his knight. Uria, lead them into oblivion. Hyper blaze. In an eerie silence, Uria rears his head back as a huge ball of orange flame sizzle into existence inside of his mouth. 
His dual set of fang teeth set themselves ablaze in fire as he rocks his head forward, shooting the ball of fire in an intense beam of magma. Iria let the beam run rampant as he directed it all across the arena, setting it all ablaze before crashing the magma down on Razor and his remaining knight. Iria then flicked his head to the side cutting the stream of magma off and allowing the sight of Razor and his servant knight to hit my eyes. The knight had just lost consciousness if her current freefall was anything to go by, along with the resounding thud that echoed throughout the arena. Razor himself was physically tired, his regeneration working at a 100% to try and regenerate his body, causing dense streams of smoke to billow off of his body. No physical damage in the slightest, their attacks work like Yubel said. It's all done spirit-wise, they are more like mental attacks than anything else, but physical reactions to the attacks are definitely apparent. Greg, dismiss the instinct. Will do Ibu. I felt full control of my body return to me as the red and yellow scales and spike section often drop from my body, the spike spine and tail staying in place. The wings stay on my back but lose their red scales returning to the black draconic hide wings that I inherited from Yubel. My hair flushed back to purple, and the emerald green eyes shifted back to turquoise. Staring straight at Razor I could see him panting. Not yet out but close, determined not to lose. Raising my left hand into the air, I beckoned Yuria to ready himself and he did. Rearing back his head, a ball of flame started to appear again within his wide jaws. Razor, do you give up or do you need to be forced? A brief few seconds passed by, but no response as Razor panted and his body continued to regenerate. Deciding to not wait any longer I dropped my hand down signaling Yuria to attack, and he did with gusto. Swinging his head round in an arc, he shot the fireball itself this time, and the huge ball of magma exploded on contact with Razor Phoenix. Thank you Yuria. You can go back to resting now. The low-pitched grunt comes my way from Yuria as he ascended off into the sky disappearing out of view before dismissing himself back into his card. Match over. Yubel Dono is the victor. And did he verbally resign or what? I didn't get time to look round the field as the silver light that transported me here ran over my body to teleport me back to the ballroom that we were in originally for the party. The party was as good as over because I had won the battle. The party was to announce their engagement, but seen as Serzich's gift to me was to be Razor's inability to marry a high-class devil, that was now voided. Therefore when I had appeared back in the ballroom, mixed emotions were sent my way. More so when the state of Razor and his knights were taken into account. One knight unconscious with a shattered jaw, the other completely exhausted and Razor also out cold as his body was regenerating itself furiously. I just stood there unfazed like nothing had even happened, like I was never sliced into four pieces from his knight's only attacks. My body and clothes showing no sign that they were cut into pieces at all. Giving my wings a slight flutter, I dismissed them back into my back. What a fun party this was. I made sure to say it with a happy tone to my voice as I meant it. Created a union with the Phoenix clan, got one of my guardians on the first day back, and got to unleash Yuria on an idiot while helping someone out. All in all a great day, hopefully Rias doesn't take it the wrong way and think I did it for her. Serzich's Lucifer owing me meant much more than Rhea's happiness did, that was a definite in my mind. I may not have disliked the whole arranged marriage thing, but it didn't bother me at all, I wouldn't have cast it a second look if I wasn't going to be mixed up in it at all. Well, I suppose I let it or have some happiness from it. I don't completely dislike her anymore. Making my way back to the side table from earlier in the midst of the silent room, I found a few spare glasses of champagne and started to drink with Yubaluna by my side. Satan knows where she came from. Um Yubal Sama. What is it Ravel Chan? Looking down to my right, I saw Ravel looking a bit nervous as she stood there in her purple dress, using her pink folding fan to hide the bottom of her face. What you did um? Ah that. Don't worry, Razor Kuhn is fine just mentally exhausted. And what I asked for itself, that was just his punishment for thinking he could use my life as he wished, even though Lucifer Dono sanctioned anything as a prize. I just returned to the underworld to think he has that kind of control from the office beyond irritating, so I made him pay for it. No, no Yubalsama, that's fine but the blood red energy and the red dragon scales. Why? Ah so it was about that, I see. Her family probably already saw it as that as I had just created the alliance with them. You should know Ravel Chan that I wasn't born as Yubal. For the first five years of my life I was a human. I was an exceptionally lucky human as I was granted with a longinus, the boosted gear. Why you Balsama, you are the Sekiryute. Hey I, yeah it just goes and nervously shout it out so the whole ballroom can hear you. Thanks, Drill Tan. Yup, yup, rather than being your average Sekiryute, I decided to create a stronger version which is called a subspecies. I am a demon after all, I am not going to follow in the ways of a human when it comes to power. Powerful. Thanks Drill Tan and this time I think it truthfully and not sarcastically. 
Still though, that idol-like dreamy expression you are wearing is a little creepy, stop it. Aye boo, seen as you ain't used to the tale yet I'll tell you this. There is a kid playing with your new tail. I made a pretty audible unintelligent grunt before I turned my head round to look at my tail. The two girls either side of me also turned round as I did when they heard my grunt, but what I turned to was a crimson-haired kid who was positively entranced with a tail. I had to admit though, it was practically identical in color to his hair. Manipulating the tail to poke him slightly, he giggled childishly before turning his head up to look at me. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw his eyes were as red as his hair, especially when I could see the spirits of Surzages and Graphia in him. So you are Lucifer's kid. What's your name? My name is Milikas Yubalsama. It's an honor to meet you. I turned around to completely face him and couldn't help but hold a smile while looking at him. His little cutesy tone while being so respectful, such a pleasant thing. Milikas don't know huh? Dot no wait, Milikas kun or maybe even Milikun. The second he heard me say Milikun, he gave me the cutest smile I had seen in a while. It made me want to kidnap him. Turning to Yubaluna with stars in my eyes, I couldn't hide the slight excitement I had. Can we kidnap him? Yubaluna looked back at me shocked. And no, of course not Yubal Sama. You cannot kidnap Lucifer Sama's child. Because she was so shocked at it, she couldn't hold down her voice and gave people with inconsiderable earshot a full view on what was going on. But Serzichas wouldn't mind as long as I gave him back afterwards. Lucifer Sama isn't the one you should be worried about. I beeped my head to the side confused for Yubaluna only to point to her right. Upon turning I found myself being glared at by the strongest queen Aka Milika's mother. Don't worry about her. Go and distract her for a bit. Yubal Sama, you can't be serious. Do I have to turn it into an order Yubaluna? I narrowed my eyes and wiped the once happy expression that appeared on my face. Despite how lackadaisical I have been so far through this party, I have been deadly serious and am about this as well. No Yubal Sama, I'll do my best to distract Grafia Sama. That's a good girl. Praising her childishly, I turn back to Milikas as she sighs and goes off towards Grafia. Bending down so I was at Milikas level, I looked him straight in the eyes, and by god was I surprised. He was only 9 or 10 years old, but his magic and spirit transcended Rhea's easily. It was ridiculous. His magic control was definitely much better than Rhea's, but he was still technically in his infancy, which I could tell was still there. The potential he had, give him enough time, and he would definitely succeed as Lucifer. I have no doubt in my mind against that. The charisma that Serzichas has while having the stern and serious personality of Grafia. Perhaps I should start to get in his good books now, and other than by just kidnapping to go have a good time. So Milikun, I just got my queen to go distract your mother for a bit. Wanna go have some fun outside for a bit? B but we'll get in trouble. Nah, you won't at least. I'll be fine though pain only lasts a second for me. Really? His eyes widened. I hooked him, yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, I doubt you get that much free time to play right. You are stuck learning and training as a noble, aren't you? Milikas answered with a slight timid nod. He agrees but also knows how important it is, smart kid. Then let me take the blame for this and you can have some fun, what do you say? Let's go. Good choice Milikun. Give me a few seconds to spare. A small silence seemed to fill the ballroom as Grafia Lucifuge, the most feared female devil, started to get irritated. The glare that she imposed on the purple-haired beauty that just returned to the demonic spirit priest's side, the young woman trembled slightly as she continued to try and distract the silver-haired queen. The man known as Serzich's Lucifer was standing next to Grafia Lucifuge, his wife, trying his best to hide his laugh, as well keeping his ears on the purple-haired beauty's obvious lies and his eyes on the person in question. Yubal was the man in question, better known as Haidu Issei in the human world. Yubal was currently scanning the ballroom, his two-meter-long crimson tail stretched out along the ground, slowly curving its way around the young boy in front of him, ready to pick him up on his way out. As Yubal smacked one fist down into his free hand, an expression of realization took to his face, which made the current Lucifer's cheerful expression grow. Yubal coiled his tail around the young crimson-haired boy in front of him and grabbed a hold of the blonde-haired girl by his side, picking her up into what you'd call the princess carry. He took a small leap into the center of the room, alerting everyone to him, to which he smirked showing a fang tooth out of the corner of his mouth. The matte black dog-like creature appeared in front of the man and ran straight towards the lone door of the ballroom, howling out to catch anyone else's attention in the room. Crashing straight through the door the dog-like creature nodded towards its master before running off down the halls. Yubal turned straight towards Grafia Lucifuge and winked once. Here my brown fluffy balls. His turquoise and orange eyes flashed as he turned back round. The second he took a leaping step forward, dozens upon dozens of brown fluffy balls cascaded down from the ceiling. 
Black googly looking eyes blinked into life on the brown fluffy balls as a chorus of curious hit the room like a symphony. Nyahahaha. The mad cackling was the last sound the demonic spirit priest made on his way out as each and every attendee looked at him confused. I'm not sure exactly how long after it was that I was eventually caught by the strongest queen for kidnapping her child, albeit the little guy had the time of his life apparently. However, there was a problem. It would seem that Sona told the cold sadist all about the only feeling pain for a brief second thing, so the pain would have to be renewed like it's a magazine conscription. Alas, while it most definitely was painful, I unfortunately didn't get to experience her ice magic outside of the frosty expression she constantly wears. So to cap it all off, currently I am sitting in the Caesa in the back garden of the Gremory Castle. The reason for why it was outside rather than inside was because of the thing that was dealing me pain along with Grafia, whose pain would arrive at random intervals, probably in between her dealing with her husband. The thing that was dealing me pain however was her familiar or should I say familiars, a hydra with a like towards licking rather than biting, still hurt regardless, and a griffin who was just pecking me as if I was a nutty was trying to crack open. Consequently, I had heard of the news, and nut was one of the weaker but more child-friendly descriptions the devils had given me after the party was over. There was one good part about this, I had Sona and my night guardian with me. Not so sure that Sona's presence was a good one so far, but I guess it has to be as I'm her pawn, she has just been complaining that my personality is too different from before. Means less hassle on me, plus there are possible trade requests to go her way. There is bound to be a few devils who think that a trade could happen. Bubel, for the final time. Tell me the truth. Ah, again. I was just about to wonder when you'd ask again. Sona Chan, it's almost like you aren't as smart as you are meant to be. I unveiled myself as Yubel, this was something complete as well. My hair changed, the only reason it was still brown beforehand was because I hadn't completely fused with Yubel. I did say at an earlier date that it was like a sacred gear. It was the first few hours of being fused with Yubel, do you really believe that I would be able to control all of her power and be able to act like I usually would so quickly? Sona just heaved a sigh at that. See, it wasn't so hard. Answer me from the start next time. Ah, she cared more for the discipline part rather than the actual explanation. I'll take that as she already had a small part of what I said and I was basically just finalizing it all for her, making it exact and filling in the few missing pieces there. So then, how do you feel now? Still feel a little eccentric. Honestly, looking at it all in the future projection it's like I just got high on some drug and I'm on the decline. I hope I don't go far enough to be depressed that the eccentricity is gone, I doubt I will care given time. I'll go back to being myself by the time school starts tomorrow, it's not like I need sleep at all. That's true even despite the fact it become a phrase meaning the opposite. Sona doesn't need to know that though, more so Grafia actually. Lick. Another taste from that damned Hydra, why can't it bite me instead? I'd prefer that bit of pain, this lick just affects me mentally. It's weird and creepy, perhaps Grafia is trying to say me kidnapping her child was creepy, or perhaps it was the balls comment I made. I'm not even sure that was something that Yubel would have influenced me to say, I'm edging towards Drag on that part, as I did give some of my body to him. He's only a dragon, I can blame him for it. Sona Chan, may I ask something? You may. Now it sounds like you don't care Sona Sama. We are going to stay quiet about tonight right? Before her inevitable reply, she raised her right eyebrow incredulously. Even if we were to stay quiet Yubel, they'd find out regardless. I see. Girls and their damn gossip slash news columns. Nimchan will probably try her damnedest to find any and all news about what happened, well, if her belligerent tone and demeanor was before us coming to the underworld is anything to go by, and I'm pretty sure that Asia will support her in some way. I should never have agreed to Nimchan helping me shop for Asia, corruption is most certainly real, even to such an innocent soul like Asia is, hopefully still is too. Ha how troublesome. Trouble you could have kept out of. Yeah, by not going. What was that? Nothing Sona-chan. Now I completely feel like I'm a child. Oh woe is me. Sona just shook her head with a slightly disappointed expression as I let out a mild sigh before changing to a smile, once the griffin pecked at my head, again cracking it yet again, causing a brief streak of blood to cascade down my face. Probably now covering the whole of the left side of my face in a crimson color. The next day, school part of it anyway, went back without a real change. It was just like normal, as normal as the males in the school disliking you for pretty prehistoric reasons anyway. There was a change though, and that came once school was definitely finished that. Once all the clubs had gotten well into their groove, the student council room struck a certain volume. I heard you save Drea Senpai. From the sound of the voice and its positioning, I'd have to guess that Nim Chan was behind me and quite close to me at that. Still though, I kept looking forward and away as I kept to doing my paperwork. 
As a byproduct, yes I did. Why didn't you just save her? My position means more to the underworld than her strife does, and I must execute my political power accordingly and not make it seem like I took a personal side. Additionally, I am a demon. The only side I'd ever take is mine and to the devils that would seem as me saving Rhea Senpai for my own reasons and thus striking into their minds that I saw her in a particular light that I most definitely do not. Turning round in my seam, I looked at Nimchan with a small look of annoyance. Why? Would you have preferred that I created a stir and made it look like I had taken a fancy to Rhea's gremory? Nimchan then took to a downcast expression as I pseudo-scolded her. Do you understand Nimchan? I'm not in the same position as Sona, my position is more like the mass. I have to be very, very careful with what I do, I can't do things on a whim. I can't deal with things because I take a personal liking or interest. Even if Sona was in the same position, I would deal with it the same way I did for Rhea Senpai and solely give some advice, except of course in the endgame I am a part of this whether I like it or not. Yes, Ice Coon. Then that's good. Save me from saying it at a more strenuous time. Though I do hope I'm not a part of anything strenuous anytime soon. Rather than being nervous and apprehensive towards it, I just don't feel like dealing with it if something was to arise. I'd probably say something stupid and in turn problematic. If so, Sona will deal with it instead. Hopefully I can push it off onto her at that time if it comes. Knock knock. Come in. Taking that time to turn around I did so and went back to my work, while keeping my ears open onto who was behind us, not really paying much attention to who it was even before they were coming in. As I started to write once again, I found that the voice belonged to someone who we had just been talking about. Sona, I have come to ask you a favor. And that is, Rias. Allow me and my peerage to fight you Balkoon. Well ain't that an annoying thing to ask for. He is his own person as much as he is my pawn, Rias. You'd have to ask him yourself on such a matter. Feeling Rias' eyes turning towards me, I waited a second till when I thought she was going to ask it straight to me. No. Ah oh, no. Why not? The reason is obvious Rhea Senpai, it's too bothersome. I'd feel the need to complain at you all for being nowhere near where you should be and then giving you all advice and then in days to come keeping check on you all to see if you have been training and taking my words to heart because I'll want to keep the spirits that follow you all around healthy, but alas I will not as it is bothersome. I also don't really have the time to do so, I don't have the ability to waste 5 minutes to beat you all in a fight. Of course I could trim it down to a mere minute by getting aid from a spirit, but that's not the fight you're looking for. Spinning my pen round twice, I then got back to my work as I could feel Rhea's and her purges, well some of them, displeasure at not being taught fraud against. And just in case you thought I'd say yes as of last night, please don't think I've taken a liking to you anymore. You are my master's friend not mine, you are someone I can only have a political relationship with, and so I will only be cordial with you. Training you or fighting you in a spar is out of the cards. Then couldn't you summon a spirit to do it for you? You are bound to have strong spirits with you. Ah so many question, I just want to go home and relax right now. I guess I'll have to be mean for a little bit. I wonder is this Rhea's being stubborn or is this a Gremory princess not getting her own way. The tension within the room grew incredibly thick at that, the reason being that Rhea's became depressed. To use the reason she gave me towards her being forced into that engagement against in such a manner was beyond cruel in reality. Perhaps it was a bit too strong here. Ay boo, did you have to say it that way? Even if she was just being stubborn, that's a little much. Says the dragon that came to fame by raising villages, crushing people like twigs for little to no reason. Drag, an emotion truly matters not when it comes to a request. The answer is yes or no, based on the truth of a neutral situation. Come on. Can't we even spare a few minutes to torture that kid with Ritra? Ah, so that's what he was truly getting at. If I could enter Balance Breaker then I might have just accepted and let you do as you wished with them all. But as I cannot, my answer to them is no. I see. That is quite the shame, I would have loved to see the Vritra kid being pummeled and I'd love even more to do it to him. Yeah, that's great. Either wary a senpai. No matter how you go about it, no matter how you try to change it. If I say no from the start, I will always answer with a no until the point in question has completely changed. If you really want to be trained by someone that is strong then hire someone or ask Lord Grimory or your brother for some help, either choice would definitely be cheaper than my help. I see. Thank you anyway. The student council room stayed quiet for a few seconds longer before the sound of the large oak doors shutting and the atmosphere that enveloped the room prior to Rhea's entrance slowly returned. Perhaps I was a little too harsh there. Breathing out through my nose, I gave no one in particular a slight shrug before turning my attention right back to my paperwork and continuing on with it. Monday morning and I had been called in early as for some reason, Kobayashi Hakus was refraining from telling me and I was to be a part of the morning assembly. I can only think about what stupidity was going to arise. 
Once I got to school though and early at that, I found that I was just going to be mentioned during the assembly, and that Kobayashi Hakus wasn't even in school today, so I was to make my way to the gym after I spoke with the headmaster after finding all of this out. When I entered the gym I couldn't help but feel lonely dread at the sight of numerous plastic screen curtains. I do remember saying I'd help her out, but honestly this is too far to be called me simply helping out especially with her not even being here. Making my way past the screens into the central area, I found the portion which would be my space with the scales, a table, three clipboards filled with paper and a chair with a lab coat on the back of it. Taking the lab coat off of the chair, I took the piece of paper that was poking out of the pocket and put the lab coat on. Say kun I trust you and your complete disinterest in women to do this effectively for me. Thanks. Um, so I do have to do this. The school physicals huh. Knowing that us males are tomorrow, that means that it's the girls today. I did get the lessons how to measure during the courses, but I never expected that I would actually put them into use outside of an actual relationship that I may have in the future. This is ha, huh, I'll just tough it out I guess. Kobayashi Hakus will reward me for doing this, but knowing her, it might get too hands on for what I consider to be a reward. Hopefully I can work something out there. Aye boo, you ain't gonna worry about her thought that you don't like women. Should I drag? I'm a demon, never in history has there been a male demon that loves other male demons. Even if something obscene happened and my tastes changed to men, Yubel herself would be very vocal and clear when changing that back. At the end of it, I have no other choice but to love women. You make it sound like it's a bad thing there. The hassle is the bad thing, and right now, all I'll get is hassle, so I'm gonna stay disinterested for a bit. I see. I don't think he does but oh well. As the bell rung for the school day to begin and for everyone to make their way towards the school's auditorium, I sat myself down on the chair. Looking at the three clipboards there, I had the first years up until the first break, the second years between that break and the lunch break, and finally, I'll have all the third years from after lunch, till the end of official school hours. Aye boo, do you mind if I use some of your mental capacity for the day? It's almost like there can't be any other reason why that'd be. Sure go ahead, just don't mutter enough for me to hear you. No reply from the dragon, but I swear I could feel a creepy smile directed towards me. The worst thing here is that when Drag notices me jotting everything down that I have to write down the cup size as well, outside of the fact that I can already tell the size through measurements, there is a chance that the girls might say as it's a whole thing with this. I heaved a slight sigh as I relaxed back into the chair and decided to just wait for the first years to arrive. It was easy for me to tell when the first year girls had arrived in the gym, the soft but nervous chatter that went round filled the room almost eerily. The room held on to a strange atmosphere, it was a far cry from the placated one that I was hoping for. When I heard the door to the gym close and lock, I stepped out from my space with clipboard in hand and called in the first two girls who slowly but surely came into the sectioned off space with me. I rested myself on the back of the chair as the two girls stood nervously in front of me fidgeting with their hands. It put a weird feeling into me, it was almost like I was a sexual predator right now. I know that right now, it's a long way from an optimal physical for you girls. But please believe me when I say this, just relax. Tensing up will only hinder both the physicals and your health in the long run. The school wouldn't have gone along with Kobayashi Hakus if I didn't know what I was doing or qualified to even be able to do this, so if you can't trust me because I'm only a year older, then trust the school who are putting their trust in me. I lowered my head slightly and looked down my nose at them as I awaited their reply. The two girls then looked at each other briefly before nodding to each other, then nodding at me. Alright then. First off we will do your heights, then while you are undressing for the weight and measurement portions I can jot down the results of your height. How does that sound? Just nervous and quiet nods in reply. I let a small smile come to the surface as I pulled the pen out of my pocket and rapidly pressed the button turning it on and off a few times. The two hours for the first years passed by plainly, it really did feel like two hours. I could literally feel and hear the seconds, minutes and hour pass by in my ear. It also didn't help that Nim Chan took longer than I would have liked to get measured, for reasons beyond my current state to care she seemed to find it appropriate to be all over me and in my face. When I properly come back to my proper self later, I'll probably fully understand what she was doing, and more than likely will sigh in response. 1B, 2W and 2H. That was bust, waist, hip, weight and height. All in all the five measurements that I had to go over, student after student. The slight nervous shiver of each girl as I took their measurements, the shy stances they took after they undressed, the gazes that bore into me. It was enough to put my soul at the tipping point. I feel awful, to the point where I honestly believe that I'd be doing better if I had even the slight interest in a female's body right now. I can only hope that word is being passed round that I'm not doing anything wrong, and the nervousness and soul-crushing acts can stop or at least dim down enough for what's left of me to be salvaged later on. 
As the bell signified for the end of the break, I gave my face a quick slap to try and revitalize myself slightly. My hope came through with my fellow second years, but it wasn't fulfilled in the slightest. New ways to effectively crush my soul came about along with the fact that more and more girls were needed to have their breasts lifted so I could measure them properly. But that came more bipedical gazes to see if my eyes strayed from their designated paths, I found myself sweat drop on multiple occasions, but not through concentration on keeping on to what I was doing, but from the increasingly intense stares that they gave me. My only saving grace in all this was Asia and her God-blessed innocence, though even then the big man didn't bother to give me a break as Asia, the most innocent girl in the school, was paired with Kariu Aika, the most perverted girl in the school. How they became such good friends, I do not know, and her commitment to trying to embarrass me at every turn was at full force today. The constant innuendos and euphemisms so Asia wouldn't catch on to what was being said was both infuriating and stressful, I almost hit the point where I strayed. Luckily, albeit not so much, she shut up when it came to her turn for being measured. In response she showed a typically normal blush and a stare that I could only label as a teasing one. I could only breathe a sigh of relief when those two left my section giving me a free few seconds to jot down the final measurements for the pair. If only the pain my soul was currently toiling through worked in the same way as my body did with physical pain. The third years damn it all to hell the third years they went out of their way to make themselves seem so damn victimized, it was unreal. But joy oh joy, I'd have to wait to the penultimate group until I had to deal with Himajima Senpai and whatever pro-level teases she was most definitely going to unload on me. Then the penultimate group finally came, the vice presidents of the occult research club and the student council. Himajima Keno and Tsubaki Shinra. Fire and ice. Eccentric and stoic. Both the complete opposites but both hurt just as much for different reasons, just their entrance alone pained me a great deal. Rr Issei Kun really is doing physicals. Oh hell, I'd have needed the few hours these third years have had alone to be able to deal with Himajima Senpai in a decent state. What do you want to? As I turned round from the table to ask them which ones they wanted to do first, Himajima Senpai was completely naked there in front of me. Why are you completely naked? Ara. Aren't you meant to be tying me up with that tape? I felt the corner of my mouth twitch. I but remember, we can't kill her. Yes, that I can't, but I can most definitely give her the most painful headache she has ever had. Please don't mix dreams with reality Himajima Senpai. Now Shinra Fukakechu, can you please hold up those backbreakers so I can do my job for today. Yes, Issei Kun. I breathed out deeply through my nose, it's times like these that I can understand why people can get so bad mentally. I was stupid to have expected better from then on out, Himajima Senpai sought to moan at every single slight touch, to whine childishly when I took the tape away, giggle excitedly when I put the tape back to her when I moved positions to measure. My prided restraint was at its complete length when I finally finished with her and had to start on Shinra Fukakechu and Lo, and behold, Himajima Senpai was able to make it much, much worse, albeit for both me and my fellow member of the student council. Himajima Senpai thought it was prudent to fondle Shinra Fukakechu as she tried helping in the whole process which had turned into an ordeal. Thankfully though, it died down completely when it came to the hide and wait portion, the part which seemed to be, for some reason, more edgy for most of the girls. I'm pretty sure me knowing their weight should be non-existent in their worries compared to their three sizes. Just on their way out, I turned around to catch Himajima Senpai wink at me just as she was about to leave, and she also had the gall to wait for my response. Himajima Senpai. Yes Issei Kun. God bless you. I narrowed my eyes as I watched her eyes screw up and her right hand raised to hold onto her head. Am hybrid. Turning back round, I slumped down into the lone chair so I could have a brief few seconds of relaxing before I was met with probably the worst pair of the whole day. Rhea's Gremory and Sona Citri. If Rhea's doesn't make this awkward because of Friday then I'll be good because the awkwardness coupled with Sona's gaze that it'd be bound to follow would completely destroy the final thread and I'm unsure whether it would be able to even grow back. Hearing the rustling of the curtains from behind me, I just turned my head slightly to see both Rhea's and Sona, the final pair, now inside the section. Yubal Kun, I'm glad that you got through it without any complaints. She expected complaints. Does she have any trust in me at all? Please Ona, can you stop with that already or at least wait till tomorrow to make comments like that? It's been mentally exhausting for me, so much so I've been wishing that I was the slight bit perverted, so I could find some solace in this. That's good. Though I must ask why Akeno-san came out with a headache. That bitch was asking for some holy justice. Moaning at the slightest movement, I should have said more than asking the big man to bless her. I see. No you don't but that's fine, I don't really want to care anymore. Yup. Now can you two strip already so I can get everything down and put this shambles behind me and leave before the males of this school try to pester me for certain girls three sizes. 
I'm not in the right mind where restraint would be possible. Once I had finally finished with the whole day, I had a few minutes left before the end of the day was signaled. Collecting up the three clipboards, I decided to keep the lab coat that I was still waiting as payment for doing the stupidity. Sticking them in my bag, I took my bag in hand and decided to leave the school gym. Brushing the length of the coat back slightly, I dug my left hand into my pocket and let out a slight sigh as I made my way back to the main building. As I rounded the corner to the front of the school, I suddenly felt a lot of eyes pinned down on me. Turning my head ever so slightly, I saw a number of boys at the window staring down at me, both on the first and second floor. Their stares were so far gone I couldn't consider them as just perverts wanting to know the girl's three sizes, there was something much more in their stares. It was strange and creepy. Ay boo, this is this is animalistic. I get the feeling that we are a dying animal in a wasteland. Vultures are taking up a perch on the branches of the scarce trees that are around us, simply waiting until we can't move anymore before they make their move. Watching and waiting. This is a very dangerous position Ibu. You must really be happy if you of all beings go into that much detail. Huh? Why wouldn't I be? I've been cooped up in tiny beings for numerous years now, never before have I seen so many fabulous breasts. I'm happy. You don't sound simply happy Drake, ecstatic is better, but still not the right amount. You learn it in time Ibu, that's one thing I'll guarantee you in this life. You created the Welsh instinct, the more you use it the more you'll understand. Now doesn't that sound ominous? Running my hand through my hair quickly, I shook my head quickly and walked straight into the school before the bell rung and the male students could ransack me. Hopefully they can forget about today sometime soon. I'm not sure exactly how long after it was that I was eventually caught by the strongest queen for kidnapping her child, albeit the little guy had the time of his life apparently. However, there was a problem. It would seem that Sona told the cold sadist all about the only feeling pain for a brief second thing, so the pain would have to be renewed like it's a magazine conscription. Alas, while it most definitely was painful, I unfortunately didn't get to experience her ice magic outside of the frosty expression she constantly wears. So to cap it all off, currently I am sitting in the Siza in the back garden of the Gremory Castle. The reason for why it was outside rather than inside was because of the thing that was dealing me pain along with Grafia, whose pain would arrive at random intervals, probably in between her dealing with her husband. The thing that was dealing me pain however was her familiar or should I say familiars, a hydra with a like towards licking rather than biting, still hurt regardless, and a griffin who was just pecking me as if I was a nutty was trying to crack open. Consequently, I had heard of the news, and Nut was one of the weaker but more child-friendly descriptions the devils had given me after the party was over. There was one good part about this, I had Sona and my night guardian with me. Not so sure that Sona's presence was a good one so far, but I guess it has to be as I'm her pawn, she has just been complaining that my personality is too different from before. Means less hassle on me, plus there are possible trade requests to go her way. There is bound to be a few devils who think that a trade could happen. Bubble, for the final time. Tell me the truth. Ah, again. I was just about to wonder when you'd ask again. Sona Chan, it's almost like you aren't as smart as you are meant to be. I unveiled myself as Yubel, this was something complete as well. My hair changed, the only reason it was still brown beforehand was because I hadn't completely fused with Yubel. I did say at an earlier date that it was like a sacred gear. It was the first few hours of being fused with Yubel, do you really believe that I would be able to control all of her power and be able to act like I usually would so quickly? Sona just heaved a sigh at that. See, it wasn't so hard. Answer me from the start next time. Ah, she cared more for the discipline part rather than the actual explanation. I'll take that as she already had a small part of what I said and I was basically just finalizing it all for her, making it exact and filling in the few missing pieces there. So then, how do you feel now? Still feel a little eccentric. Honestly, looking at it all in the future projection it's like I just got high on some drug and I'm on the decline. I hope I don't go far enough to be depressed that the eccentricity is gone, I doubt I will care given time. I'll go back to being myself by the time school starts tomorrow, it's not like I need sleep at all. That's true even despite the fact it become a phrase meaning the opposite. Sona doesn't need to know that though, more so Grafia actually. Lick. Another taste from that damned Hydra, why can't it bite me instead? I'd prefer that bit of pain, this lick just affects me mentally. It's weird and creepy, perhaps Grafia is trying to say me kidnapping her child was creepy, or perhaps it was the balls comment I made. I'm not even sure that was something that Yubel would have influenced me to say, I'm edging towards Drag on that part, as I did give some of my body to him. He's only a dragon, I can blame him for it. Sona-chan, may I ask something? You may. Now it sounds like you don't care Sona-sama. We are going to stay quiet about tonight right? Before her inevitable reply, she raised her right eyebrow incredulously. 
Even if we were to stay quiet Yubel, they'd find out regardless. I see. Girls and their damn gossip slash news columns. Nim Chan will probably try her damnedest to find any and all news about what happened, well, if her belligerent tone and demeanor was before us coming to the underworld is anything to go by, and I'm pretty sure that Asia will support her in some way. I should never have agreed to Nim Chan helping me shop for Asia, corruption is most certainly real, even to such an innocent soul like Asia is, hopefully still is too. Ha ah, how troublesome. Trouble you could have kept out of. Yeah, by not going. What was that? Nothing Sona Chan. Now I completely feel like I'm a child. Oh woe is me. Sona just shook her head with a slightly disappointed expression, as I let out a mild sigh before changing to a smile, once the griffin pecked at my head, again cracking it yet again, causing a brief streak of blood to cascade down my face. Probably now covering the whole of the left side of my face in a crimson color. The next day, school part of it anyway, went back without a real change. It was just like normal, as normal as the males in the school disliking you for pretty prehistoric reasons anyway. There was a change though, and that came once school was definitely finished that. Once all the clubs had gotten well into their groove, the student council room struck a certain volume. I heard you saved Drea Senpai. From the sound of the voice and its positioning, I'd have to guess that Nim Chan was behind me and quite close to me at that. Still though, I kept looking forward and away as I kept to doing my paperwork. As a byproduct, yes I did. Why didn't you just save her? My position means more to the underworld than her strife does, and I must execute my political power accordingly and not make it seem like I took a personal side. Additionally, I am a demon. The only side I'd ever take is mine and to the devils that would seem as me saving Rhea Senpai for my own reasons and thus striking into their minds that I saw her in a particular light that I most definitely do not. Turning round in my seam, I looked at Nimchan with a small look of annoyance. Why? Would you have preferred that I created a stir and made it look like I had taken a fancy to Rhea's gremory? Nim Chan then took to a downcast expression as I pseudo scolded her. Do you understand Nim Chan? I'm not in the same position as Sona, my position is more like the mass. I have to be very, very careful with what I do, I can't do things on a whim. I can't deal with things because I take a personal liking or interest. Even if Sona was in the same position, I would deal with it the same way I did for Rhea Senpai and solely give some advice, except of course in the endgame I am a part of this whether I like it or not. Yes, Ice Coon. Then that's good. Save me from saying it at a more strenuous time. Though I do hope I'm not a part of anything strenuous anytime soon. Rather than being nervous and apprehensive towards it, I just don't feel like dealing with it if something was to arise. I'd probably say something stupid and in turn problematic. If so, Sona will deal with it instead. Hopefully I can push it off onto her at that time if it comes. Knock knock. Come in. Taking that time to turn around I did so and went back to my work, while keeping my ears open onto who was behind us, not really paying much attention to who it was even before they were coming in. As I started to write once again, I found that the voice belonged to someone who we had just been talking about. Sona, I have come to ask you a favor. And that is, Rias. Allow me and my peerage to fight you Balkoon. Well ain't that an annoying thing to ask for. He is his own person as much as he is my pawn, Rias. You'd have to ask him yourself on such a matter. Feeling Rias' eyes turning towards me, I waited a second till when I thought she was going to ask it straight to me. No. Ah oh, no. Why not? The reason is obvious Rhea Senpai, it's too bothersome. I'd feel the need to complain at you all for being nowhere near where you should be, and then giving you all advice, and then in days to come keeping check on you all to see if you have been training and taking my words to heart, because I'll want to keep the spirits that follow you all around healthy, but alas, I will not as it is bothersome. I also don't really have the time to do so, I don't have the ability to waste 5 minutes to beat you all in a fight. Of course I could trim it down to a mere minute by getting aid from a spirit, but that's not the fight you're looking for. Spinning my pen round twice, I then got back to my work as I could feel Rhea's and her peerages, well some of them, displeasure at not being taught fraud against. And just in case you thought I'd say yes as of last night, please don't think I've taken a liking to you anymore. You are my master's friend not mine, you are someone I can only have a political relationship with, and so I will only be cordial with you. Training you or fighting you in a spar is out of the cards. Then couldn't you summon a spirit to do it for you? You are bound to have strong spirits with you. Ah so many question, I just want to go home and relax right now. I guess I'll have to be mean for a little bit. I wonder is this Rhea's being stubborn or is this a Gremory princess not getting her own way. The tension within the room grew incredibly thick at that, the reason being that Rhea's became depressed. To use the reason she gave me towards her being forced into that engagement against in such a manner was beyond cruel in reality. Perhaps it was a bit too strong here. Ay boo, did you have to say it that way? Even if she was just being stubborn, that's a little much. 
Says the dragon that came to fame by raising villages, crushing people like twigs for little to no reason. Drag, an emotion truly matters not when it comes to a request. The answer is yes or no, based on the truth of a neutral situation. Come on. Can't we even spare a few minutes to torture that kid with Ritra? Ah, so that's what he was truly getting at. If I could enter Balance Breaker then I might have just accepted and let you do as you wished with them all. But as I cannot, my answer to them is no. I see. That is quite the shame, I would have loved to see the Vritra kid being pummeled and I'd love even more to do it to him. Yeah, that's great. Either wary a senpai. No matter how you go about it, no matter how you try to change it. If I say no from the start, I will always answer with a no until the point in question has completely changed. If you really want to be trained by someone that is strong then hire someone or ask Lord Grimory or your brother for some help, either choice would definitely be cheaper than my help. I see. Thank you anyway. The student council room stayed quiet for a few seconds longer before the sound of the large oak doors shutting and the atmosphere that enveloped the room prior to Rhea's entrance slowly returned. Perhaps I was a little too harsh there. Breathing out through my nose, I gave no one in particular a slight shrug before turning my attention right back to my paperwork and continuing on with it. Monday morning and I had been called in early as for some reason, Kobayashi Hakus was refraining from telling me and I was to be a part of the morning assembly. I can only think about what stupidity was going to arise. Once I got to school though and early at that, I found that I was just going to be mentioned during the assembly and that Kobayashi Hakus wasn't even in school today, so I was to make my way to the gym after I spoke with the headmaster after finding all of this out. When I entered the gym I couldn't help but feel only dread at the sight of numerous plastic screen curtains. I do remember saying I'd help her out, but honestly this is too far to be called me simply helping out especially with her not even being here. Making my way past the screens into the central area, I found the portion which would be my space with the scales, a table, three clipboards filled with paper and a chair with a lab coat on the back of it. Taking the lab coat off of the chair, I took the piece of paper that was poking out of the pocket and put the lab coat on. Say kun I trust you and your complete disinterest in women to do this effectively for me. Thanks. And so I do have to do this. The school physicals huh. Knowing that us males are tomorrow, that means that it's the girls today. I did get the lessons how to measure during the courses, but I never expected that I would actually put them into use outside of an actual relationship that I may have in the future. This is ha, I'll just tough it out I guess. Kobayashi Hakus will reward me for doing this, but knowing her, it might get too hands on for what I consider to be a reward. Hopefully I can work something out there. Aye boo, you ain't gonna worry about her thought that you don't like women. Should I drag? I'm a demon, never in history has there been a male demon that loves other male demons. Even if something obscene happened and my tastes changed to men, Yubel herself would be very vocal and clear when changing that back. At the end of it, I have no other choice but to love women. You make it sound like it's a bad thing there. The hassle is the bad thing, and right now, all I'll get is hassle, so I'm gonna stay disinterested for a bit. I see. I don't think he does but oh well. As the bell rung for the school day to begin and for everyone to make their way towards the school's auditorium, I sat myself down on the chair. Looking at the three clipboards there, I had the first years up until the first break, the second years between that break and the lunch break, and finally, I'll have all the third years from after lunch, till the end of official school hours. Aye boo, do you mind if I use some of your mental capacity for the day? It's almost like there can't be any other reason why that'd be. Sure go ahead, just don't mutter enough for me to hear you. No reply from the dragon, but I swear I could feel a creepy smile directed towards me. The worst thing here is that when Drake notices me jotting everything down that I have to write down the cup size as well, outside of the fact that I can already tell the size through measurements, there is a chance that the girls might say as it's a whole thing with this. I heaved a slight sigh as I relaxed back into the chair and decided to just wait for the first years to arrive. It was easy for me to tell when the first year girls had arrived in the gym, the soft but nervous chatter that went round filled the room almost eerily. The room held onto a strange atmosphere, it was a far cry from the placated one that I was hoping for. When I heard the door to the gym close and lock, I stepped out from my space with clipboard in hand and called in the first two girls who slowly but surely came into the sectioned off space with me. I rested myself on the back of the chair as the two girls stood nervously in front of me fidgeting with their hands. It put a weird feeling into me, it was almost like I was a sexual predator right now. I know that right now, it's a long way from an optimal physical for you girls. But please believe me when I say this, just relax. Tensing up will only hinder both the physicals and your health in the long run. The school wouldn't have gone along with Kobayashi Hakus if I didn't know what I was doing or qualified to even be able to do this, so if you can't trust me because I'm only a year older, then trust the school who are putting their trust in me. I lowered my head slightly and looked down my nose at them as I awaited their reply. 
The two girls then looked at each other briefly before nodding to each other, then nodding at me. Alright then. First off we will do your heights, then while you are undressing for the weight and measurement portions I can jot down the results of your height. How does that sound? Dust nervous and quiet nods in reply. I let a small smile come to the surface as I pulled the pen out of my pocket and rapidly pressed the button turning it on and off a few times. The two hours for the first years passed by plainly, it really did feel like two hours. I could literally feel and hear the seconds, minutes and hour pass by in my ear. It also didn't help that Nim Chan took longer than I would have liked to get measured, for reasons beyond my current state to care she seemed to find it appropriate to be all over me and in my face. When I properly come back to my proper self later, I'll probably fully understand what she was doing, and more than likely will sigh in response. 1B, 2W and 2H. That was bust, waist, hip, weight and height. All in all the five measurements that I had to go over, student after student. The slight nervous shiver of each girl as I took their measurements, the shy stances they took after they undressed, the gazes that bore into me. It was enough to put my soul at the tipping point. I feel awful, to the point where I honestly believe that I'd be doing better if I had even the slight interest in a female's body right now. I can only hope that word is being passed round that I'm not doing anything wrong, and the nervousness and soul-crushing acts can stop or at least dim down enough for what's left of me to be salvaged later on. As the bell signified for the end of the break, I gave my face a quick slap to try and revitalize myself slightly. My hope came through with my fellow second years, but it wasn't fulfilled in the slightest. New ways to effectively crush my soul came about along with the fact that more and more girls were needed to have their breasts lifted so I could measure them properly. But that came more bipedical gazes to see if my eyes strayed from their designated paths, I found myself sweat drop on multiple occasions, but not through concentration on keeping on to what I was doing, but from the increasingly intense stares that they gave me. My only saving grace in all this was Asia and her God-blessed innocence, though even then the big man didn't bother to give me a break as Asia, the most innocent girl in the school, was paired with Kariu Aika, the most perverted girl in the school. How they became such good friends, I do not know, and her commitment to trying to embarrass me at every turn was at full force today. The constant innuendos and euphemisms so Asia wouldn't catch on to what was being said was both infuriating and stressful, I almost hit the point where I strayed. Luckily, albeit not so much, she shut up when it came to her turn for being measured. In response she showed a typically normal blush and a stare that I could only label as a teasing one. I could only breathe a sigh of relief when those two left my section giving me a free few seconds to jot down the final measurements for the pair. If only the pain my soul was currently toiling through worked in the same way as my body did with physical pain. The third years damn it all to hell the third years they went out of their way to make themselves seem so damn victimized, it was unreal. But joy oh joy, I'd have to wait to the penultimate group until I had to deal with Himajima Senpai and whatever pro-level teases she was most definitely going to unload on me. Then the penultimate group finally came, the vice presidents of the occult research club and the student council. Himajima Keno and Tsubaki Shinra. Fire and ice. Eccentric and stoic. Both the complete opposites but both hurt just as much for different reasons, just their entrance alone pained me a great deal. RR at Issei Kun really is doing physicals. Oh hell, I'd have needed the few hours these third years have had alone to be able to deal with Himajima Senpai in a decent state. What do you want to? As I turned round from the table to ask them which ones they wanted to do first, Himajima Senpai was completely naked there in front of me. Why are you completely naked? Ara. Aren't you meant to be tying me up with that tape? I felt the corner of my mouth twitch. I but remember, we can't kill her. Yes, that I can't, but I can most definitely give her the most painful headache she has ever had. Please don't mix dreams with reality Himajima Senpai. Now Shinra Fukakechu, can you please hold up those backbreakers so I can do my job for today. Yes, Issei Kun. I breathed out deeply through my nose, it's times like these that I can understand why people can get so bad mentally. I was stupid to have expected better from then on out, Himajima Senpai sought to moan at every single slight touch, to whine childishly when I took the tape away, giggle excitedly when I put the tape back to her when I moved positions to measure. My prided restraint was at its complete length when I finally finished with her and had to start on Shinra Fukakechu and lo, and behold, Himajima Senpai was able to make it much, much worse, albeit for both me and my fellow member of the student council. Himajima Senpai thought it was prudent to fondle Shinra Fukakechu as she tried helping in the whole process which had turned into an ordeal. Thankfully though, it died down completely when it came to the hide and weight portion, the part which seemed to be, for some reason, more edgy for most of the girls. I'm pretty sure me knowing their weight should be non-existent in their worries compared to their three sizes. Just on their way out, I turned around to catch Himajima Senpai wink at me just as she was about to leave, and she also had the gall to wait for my response. Himajima Senpai. Yes Issei-kun. 
God bless you. I narrowed my eyes as I watched her eyes screw up and her right hand raised to hold onto her head. Am hybrid. Turning back round, I slumped down into the lone chair so I could have a brief few seconds of relaxing before I was met with probably the worst pair of the whole day. Rhea's Gremory and Sona Citri. If Rhea's doesn't make this awkward because of Friday then I'll be good because the awkwardness coupled with Sona's gaze that it'd be bound to follow would completely destroy the final thread and I'm unsure whether it would be able to even grow back. Hearing the rustling of the curtains from behind me, I just turned my head slightly to see both Rhea's and Sona, the final pair, now inside the section. Ubal Kuhn, I'm glad that you got through it without any complaints. She expected complaints. Does she have any trust in me at all? Please Ona, can you stop with that already or at least wait till tomorrow to make comments like that? It's been mentally exhausting for me, so much so I've been wishing that I was the slight bit perverted so I could find some solace in this. That's good. Though I must ask why Akeno-san came out with a headache. That bitch was asking for some holy justice. Moaning at the slightest movement, I should have said more than asking the big man to bless her. I see. No you don't but that's fine, I don't really want to care anymore. Yup. Now can you two strip already so I can get everything down and put this shambles behind me and leave before the males of this school try to pester me for certain girls three sizes. I'm not in the right mind where restraint would be possible. Once I had finally finished with the whole day, I had a few minutes left before the end of the day was signaled. Collecting up the three clipboards, I decided to keep the lab coat that I was still waiting as payment for doing the stupidity. Sticking them in my bag, I took my bag in hand and decided to leave the school gym. Brushing the length of the coat back slightly, I dug my left hand into my pocket and let out a slight sigh as I made my way back to the main building. As I rounded the corner to the front of the school, I suddenly felt a lot of eyes pinned down on me. Turning my head ever so slightly, I saw a number of boys at the windows staring down at me, both on the first and second floor. Their stares were so far gone I couldn't consider them as just perverts wanting to know the girls' three sizes, there was something much more in their stares. It was strange and creepy. Aye boo, this is this is animalistic. I get the feeling that we are a dying animal in a wasteland. Vultures are taking up a perch on the branches of the scarce trees that are around us, simply waiting until we can't move anymore before they make their move. Watching and waiting. This is a very dangerous position Ibu. You must really be happy if you of all beings go into that much detail. Huh? Why wouldn't I be? I've been cooped up in tiny beings for numerous years now, never before have I seen so many fabulous breasts. I'm happy. You don't sound simply happy Drake, ecstatic is better, but still not the right amount. You learn it in time Ibu, that's one thing I'll guarantee you in this life. You created the Welsh instinct, the more you use it the more you'll understand. Now doesn't that sound ominous? Running my hand through my hair quickly, I shook my head quickly and walked straight into the school before the bell rung and the male students could ransack me. Hopefully they can forget about today sometime soon. End of the part 3. So how was this story, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this story with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.